Hello and welcome to another episode of The Social Connection. I am your host, Luis Mendieta. And before we start, I just want to thank On TV for having a banquet for us on this weekend. Um, and I was awarded Producer of the Year 2015. I want to thank everyone for making this happen. And I'm very thankful of being part of this wonderful association. And I want to say to everyone up there, if you ever want to make your dreams come true, go ahead and do it. Because to me, I just make mine. But thank you anyway. Today we have with us Karen Tomales, who she's a professional drummer. And she is extraordinary when she plays, and she plays in all types of bands. And here with us is Karen Tomales. How you doing, Karen? How are you? Good. How are you doing? Very good. Very good. So tell me, how did all this start? Well, I, uh, I actually started on piano. I started from a young age, about uh, four or five years old. And um, I learned to play by ear. I would hear songs on the TV and radio and go and plunk them out on the piano. But uh, I started taking formal lessons. When I was about uh, 11, I decided to switch to the drums. Well, that sounds, that sounds very good, very excited. Now, when you were growing up, do you have any heroes or any people that inspire you to really become who you are right now? Yeah, actually, that's, um, that's kind of how I got into the drums. I, I've always been into old movies, you know, the old classic movies. And uh, I saw the Benny Goodman story when I was about 11. Of course, I saw Gene Krupa playing the drums, and I thought, wow, that looks so Excellent. great. That would be fun to do. So that's one of the, the things that make you really actually go through it, the whole thing. Now, growing up, when you were going to school, do you perform for the school? Do, do you do anything mm -hmm. that you remember that you say, wow, I remember very well, you know, my teacher or someone telling me, you know, that I'm very good about what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I started in the middle school band and uh, playing in the percussion section. Of course, I did the same thing in high school, playing in the marching band, the concert band, and in the jazz band. And um, just uh, people that I met, I, I played in jazz clubs. I started playing in jazz clubs when I was about 13, 14 years old. Wow, it's impressive. At that age to be playing, you know, especially jazz, which, you know, a lot of people really enjoy it. I mean, that's one of those type of of music that uh, has different flavors, different sounds, different things, which is pretty good. So when did you actually start playing with the first group? How, how did this happen? Well, there is a, uh, it's, it's no longer there. I'm, I'm originally from Toledo, Ohio. Um, there was a bar just around the corner from my house called Ragtime Rick's Bar and Grill. And the owner of the place was, um, he's a pianist. He uh, would sometimes play solo, other times he would play with a larger group. So when I started playing there, I would uh, play piano in between his sets. And then I actually would, um, a gentleman there taught me how to play the spoons, believe it or not. Wow, the so, spoons, huh? Yes, Just I was playing like the spoons. Just kind of like a country style? Or yeah, different? More, more well, well the, the style of music they play there was more like ragtime and oh, New, yeah, yes. New Orleans yes, style jazz. Style. Yes. And then uh, gradually I started sitting in on the drums. Yes, play there. Th that, re that reminds me, there is a, a type of music, it's called Zydeco. Mm -hmm. And they play a little bit of French and a little bit of English, and especially in New Orleans and Louisiana and all that area. And, uh, and they use the spoons there, you know, they use the spoons, they use accordions, they use all kinds, but definitely the drums too. So that's, that's, that's pretty nice. Now, uh, tell me about when you were a little kid, when you were growing up with your family, does anyone in your family play any instruments? Well, my mom used to play guitar and she used to sing and play a little bit of piano. She, um, she actually bought me books and was trying to um, teach me to begin with on the piano. My dad wasn't very musical. He, he thought he could sing, but no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So now you are involved in so many different bands. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about a little bit of each band here? 
Well, the bands that I work with now, uh, some are people that I've worked with for years. Um, actually, one group, Sheila Landis, she's a singer, and her partner, Rick Maddell, I met them playing at, um, at Rusty's Jazz Cafe in Toledo. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. I was mm -hmm. about 14 or 15 years old when I started playing with them. And throughout the years, on and off, they would call me for different gigs. So I, I work quite a bit with them. Okay. Um, I work with the uh, Gary Greenfelder Big Band, mm -hmm. and we've already performed yes. in the studio. <laughs> um, let's see who else. Oh, I work with a group called Kanjama. It stands for Contemporary Jazz Masters. And most of the time we're a quartet, other times we expand with more people, but we play different venues. And then a lot of other stuff is whoever calls and needs a drummer, they'll call me up. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, what is the most exciting thing that you have ever done playing your drums? I would have to say back in 2010, I did a contract, a four month contract working on a cruise ship. I worked for um, Celebrity Cruise Lines mm -hmm. um, and I worked on the Solstice. For four months, I played with a uh, jazz quartet and uh, we toured all around the Caribbean, parts of uh, Mexico. Nice. Now, that was just an amazing experience. When, when you're part of that, I, I you become uh, part of the crew members there or you are a little bit of separate than everybody else? Like you and the crews, you work, you perform, but they allow for you to actually enjoy part of the cruise? Well, depending on the position you are on the ship, we, um, you are considered crew, but different crew members have, I guess, different privileges, so mm -hmm. to speak. So us as entertainers, we could walk around the ship, we could um, maybe eat at the different restaurants if we wanted to. We had certain restrictions, though, also like the other crew members, but um, there's just so many people. You meet people from all around the world, and you'll make so many great friends. And that's exciting, that's exciting. Yep. Now, uh, since you are a, a drummer, professional drummer, uh, what what does it take to for someone who wants to just start for the very first time? What do you recommend to do if they want to play the drums? Because let me tell you this, uh, I'm sure that a lot of parents, they think, oh, no, 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 you're not playing the drums, it's going to be too noisy, it's going to be crazy. Nowadays, I know that we have different types of drums that you, can, you even wear headphones and you don't hear any noise. Mm -hmm. But of course, it is electrical, you know. But what can you tell us about it, you know, that, that, that someone wants to start playing the drums and feel good about it? Well, the, the passion for the music, the excitement about it is um, first and foremost. You know, I've had students before, maybe some were more into it than others, but just uh, listen to as much music as you can, find out what you like, um, and get experience playing with different groups, find you a good teacher. Um, it, it seems to me, though, that the times are a little different now where my, my mother was very supportive of me taking me to these clubs when I was underage and uh, playing at these jazz clubs. But I believe that having a mentor is one of the most important things uh, you know, a young person getting into the music can do. That, that's so true. I, I do believe that having a mentor in anything that you do in life is what uh, creates and makes you be who you are. Because when you don't have someone who can tell you, direct you, and guide you to what you need to do, uh, it's, it's kind of hard. You know, it's hard to see people just, you know, I want to do this and I'm going on my own, but without the experience, without the knowledge, there's no way that you're going to go far. But if you get someone who can be your mentor, who somebody who can tell you, I've been in those, you know, in the past and I can tell you how to do it, it it's, it's exciting and it's great. So that's how you become who you really want to be thanks to the help of those people. And I'm sure that you probably have not only one, but maybe more mentors that has helped you, you know, accomplish what you, who you are right now. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I, I would like to know, uh, playing drums, is it a different types of drums that people play? Or I've seen some rock players, you know, 
they, they have like, I don't know, 10 different drums and sounds and everything. Does every drum has a different sound? Yeah, it's um, with, with the different types of drummers, depending on what music you're playing, you do see a lot of rock drummers where they bring out the whole kit and caboodle. And, yes. And, and that's fun. You know, I've, I've enjoyed doing that before. But uh, with jazz, maybe it's a smaller setup you're dealing with. Plus, you don't have to haul as much equipment. Something that I always am I'm interested in, uh, I want to know, they use when they play in jazz, sometimes they make that little noise and they have, it looks like a broom to me. I don't mm -hmm. know. And they, pss, and they start kind of going. Even sometimes when they play here, you know, on the play, they like, pss, make it a beautiful sound. What, what is that called? Those are the brushes. The br yeah, the brushes. But when you do that, it is an, a name for it. When you play it and, and you hit the, the drum and then you do the brush, or it's no name. It just. If, if somebody has come up with a name, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay. I do it myself. Okay, okay. Now, you, I, I noticed that you, you read notes on the drums. And I've never thought, you know, that somebody, in order for you to play the drums, you just kind of go with the beat. But you actually read the notes and when you're going to be playing, you know, in the drums. And I think that is, is fascinating the, to, to have something like that, especially when you play drums, you know. Um, Anybody else will think, oh, drums is easy, I can just listen to the tune, I can follow you guys, and I can do that. Can you follow without playing with the notes? Oh, of course. Yes? That's, that's where the jazz comes in. It's about improvisation. You, you start off with the basis of knowing what to do in a certain situation. It's not like when I'm reading music, I have to read tang, tang, ka tang. You know, yes, you, yes. you already know how to do that. You know how to do a jazz groove. You know how to do a funk groove, um, maybe a samba groove, whatever it calls for. So you go from that basis, and the rest is up to you, what you're playing along with, what you hear. Hey, have you ever been with a group that everybody plays, but we're just going to jam, all right? We're going to play. And no notes, no anything. Let's just play whatever comes out of there. And have you ever been like that and something like that? that everybody's playing and then you kind of follow and, and then suddenly it's your turn to shine and you do your thing. And then there's going to be the guitar, the bass player, the piano player. You know, I'm sure that they have all kinds of different people who, who can do that. But is it hard? No, no, it's, it's actually enjoyable. I, I, in fact, the other night I just did an impromptu jam session. A okay. friend called, called me over. But um, you, again, you just start from the basis of what you know. And musicians, I, I always marvel at this, that we walk around with this whole bank of songs in our head. So somebody says, OK, let's play this song. Or maybe it's a song I've never heard. Right. So I look at that as a new challenge. Well, that's excellent. I, I noticed also that it has revolutionized, I guess, and changed a lot when you play your drums. Uh, there is now a workout that people do playing drums. What can you tell us about that? Oh, it is very uh, physical when, you, when you're playing. Um, and some gigs maybe are not so physical. I call it wallflower music. <laughs> <laughs> but um, gigs where you can really play out and just you know, give it full force, it's fun. If I, if I work up a good sweat, I'm happy. Oh, that's good. That's excellent. Tell me, what would you like to be doing in the future? What is it that you would love to perform? Who you would like to perform with? Oh, that's that you say, you know what, <laughs> I really would like to perform with this, either a band, group, or singer, or someone who you feel that you feel good about doing something like that. Who would that be? That's a good question. I, I can't think of any one person, but um, I, I can tell you that uh, I used to have this dream of uh, playing with Stevie Wonder and that actually came true, but through sad circumstances. Mm -hmm. One of my, probably my biggest influence, my, uh, my mentor, he was actually a drummer for Motown Records. His okay. name was uh, Richard Pistol Allen. Okay. And uh, just sweetheart of a person. He was like a father to me, just he would keep me out of trouble. And I used to sit there, watch him play at Rusty's Jazz Cafe in Toledo and just soak up his playing, learn as much as I could. But he was always supportive, just very encouraging. And um, just, uh, you know, watching him play, you know, just that whole influence. 
That's why I that talked about it. the importance of uh, having a mentor. Yes. But, um, you know, just uh, just his experience, you know. Yes. Yeah, the, it's, you know, how many times we, we and through our paths and our lives, we meet people and mean so much to us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes we don't realize till, till they're gone. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we appreciate everything. Not to say that we don't appreciate when we have it at the moment, but we feel that we're going to have it forever. And it just happens that it doesn't happen like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's good that you recognize that and you know that it was important in your life. Mm -hmm. And for all those people out there who want to know about mentors or anything like that, uh, I'm sure that it's a lot. It could be in soccer, it can be in anything that you want to do. But it's always people out there who they're willing to help and give you advice and help you cope with anything and, and try to make you feel good about what you do. And that's how you su succeed, you know, and it's how you make it through life. And, uh, and I'm very happy that you have done that, you know, because uh, it is tough to be a drummer. But I feel that it's even tougher to be a female drummer when most of the players are males. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think that you can probably share a couple experience, but I'm sure that when you were starting in the very beginning, being a kid, how would that feel to be a drummer with all these adults and their own males? It was um, tough at times. And, um, you know, some people were more supportive than others. I, I got the feeling that I had to work twice or three times as hard just to gain the respect yeah. and just, um, you know, that made me work even harder just to, you know, be as, you know, the best that I could be. But um, fortunately, a lot of people that I played with were very supportive and, um, oh, the, I lost my train of thought when I was talking about a pistol. You, oh, okay. you would ask me about who I would like to play with. Sure, sure. Um, that, that instance after he had uh, passed away, um, they had his wake at a place that's no longer there. It was called Burt's on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Burt's uh, Marketplace over in Eastern Market. He used to have a place on uh, Broadway. But they had his wake there, and um, all these people from Motown were there. A lot of the musicians, the Funk Brothers that played mm -hmm. for Motown. Um, Martha Reeves was there, and also uh, Stevie Wonder was there. So they had a jam session, a lot of the musicians getting up and playing, and it came to my turn to play. So I get up there, and they're swapping out some other musicians, and then Stevie Wonder comes walking up with his, um, you know, one of his uh, colleagues. Call, yeah. And uh, so we start playing, and I've never heard him play jazz before, but that day you he did. broke out with uh, John Coltrane's Giant Steps, playing at breakneck speed. Right. I was having a ball. I was like, wow, I didn't know he could play jazz. But just through that circumstance, you know, I, I did get to play with Stevie Wonder, and it was an amazing experience. I think in the spirit, and not only that, but also um, being able to perform with him in behalf of someone who meant so much to you, it make you feel very good about it. Mm -hmm. Because it make you feel that, you know what, thank you, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity, and not only that, but also the time that you have taken to teach me. And now it's for me an honor to play, and especially playing with all these big people, you know? Because I think it's what sometimes it happens to all of us. Uh, things happen in our lives, and we should be thankful for everything that happens because there's always reasons why things happen. And in your case, it happens for a reason. You know, unfortunately, yes, your friend, your mentor, the person passed away, but thanks to that, he brought to you all these many people who created even more excitement in your life to, to become who you want to be as a drummer and, and, and fill your life full of energy and say, you know what, this is what I was looking for and this is what I really want to make out of life. And, I, and I'm really, really happy for you that you have this experience in your life. And I'm sure you're going to have more experiences, not only just the one that you just had, but more, and, and I'm sure you already had some too. Um, but I just want to know how tough it is in life to be a drummer. Well, f for, I guess, looking at it as a, as a drummer, 
I, I try to make a living for the longest time as a drummer, as a performer, and um, teaching private lessons. It, it was good for a while, but it, 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 I mean, you have to really hustle, you have to really work at it and um, stay steady at it. Uh, maybe it works for some people, maybe not, but just the joy that you get out of it. I mean, I, I have a day job now, you know, I've had for the past eight years, which I love, but I could never stop performing. You know, you, you always have issues, you know, with music, you know, maybe somebody calls and cancels a gig, whatever the case is, but to me, just the joy of being able to express yourself through music is, nothing comes close. It's fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. I think that um, it is just amazing, you know. How does it feel to perform in front of so many people? Sometimes in, in the jazz business, you have comfortable places, which is a small crowds, and it make you feel more like you're at home, and you make you feel good. But what happens when you go to a place and it's full of people, and they're waiting to hear this band perform? What's the, what's the feeling that, you, that goes through your body when that's happening? It's, it's exciting. I still get butterflies a little bit before I perform, but a lot of it is just the excitement. I, I always get this burst of exhilaration and energy when I perform, but uh, I prefer playing for more s smaller, more intimate crowds where you can connect more with the audience and see the reaction, how they're moving to the music with uh, larger venues Maybe you can't see the people very well because <laughs> the lights are blaring in your right, face. Right. <laughs> Did that ever happen to you when you are reading the notes and you have lights and blinding you, you're trying to read what you're playing and you can because of the lighting? Yeah, yes? that, yeah that can happen before, but you just you know, try to make the best of it. The best of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you tell the young girls who wants to play drums and want to be just like you, how to start? What will you tell them? Well, the, the same thing I would tell any young person, you know, find out what music you like and uh, just um, go, go see live music. That's, you know, don't just stay cooped up in your room listening to stuff. Get to know people, talk with musicians, find out who, who your influences are. You know, most of mine happen to be male drummers. Yeah. But, um, you know, just, Find, find your influences and learn as much as you can. But the ultimate thing is don't lose your self-respect because there's a lot of guys out there that will try to take advantage of you, maybe treat you a certain way, but you know, never, never lose your self-respect. That's, that's always good. It's mm -hmm. very important to maintain yourself in a professional way so you can succeed in what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, because when things change, it, it doesn't work out. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a good advice. That's very, very good. Also, I would like to know um, when uh, a player, uh, you know, goes into a place, especially a nice, just, you know, place when you're going to be playing with so many people, what do you have to do before you're ready to go out there? Uh, do you prepare yourself in many ways? Do you need to warm up a little bit? Or what, what do you need to do? What does a performer needs to have before they go out there? Well, I like to make sure I'm in a good mood and not feel rushed. I mean, sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes you're running from one thing to another and you get all sweaty and you're running, hair all crazy. but. The, the main thing is I just try to take a deep breath and relax and, you know, think of it that I'm going to have fun, I'm going to enjoy myself. Now that you just mentioned that, I remember something very well. I know a lot of players, when depending on the instrument that they have, they have to come and bring it. In this case, you have to bring the drums. You have to carry every single part of your set in order for you to perform. How is it like? Sometimes it's a little bit complicated, Irritated? What is it? It can be very uh, complicated. I finally invested in a in a cart <laughs> <laughs> that makes things easier. Um, actually, uh, one of one of the worst gigs that I did that made me invest in the cart. I played at MGM Grand Casino with uh, uh, a group there, 
And the bass player let me borrow his cart, um, but leaving, I was waiting for a luggage cart that they never brought till I had to call again. They finally brought it. So I had to get through crowds of people, people fighting, tussling, all drunk and all that. But it's, you know. It's just hard. Yeah. That way. I know, I know. I think that, uh, you know, I admire you for being able to carry everything every time when you go and perform somewhere and just being able to bring, you know, the whole thing. Uh, it's not easy. I mean, it's easy if you have a trumpet or something that's just one thing, but when you carry a whole set, and it's, it's hard. It's hard. If I had a quarter for every time somebody said, don't you wish you played the flute? I'll be super rich now. <laughs> <laughs> I am sure there's a lot of people saying something like that because yeah. they can feel the pain that you go through every time you have to lift it, put it back, put it together, and all this. Yes. Uh, I would like to say to you, um, um, for all the people who are watching here, where you're going to be performing next? So where you, what are you going to be doing next? So everybody knows about what you're going to be doing. I believe I'll be playing with uh, the Gary Greenfelder Big Band at Club 54 next Thursday. Okay. Club and, 54 and, and in Spain And that Heights. is going to be um, Big Band music, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so that's uh, everybody get to know there. If they ever want to do that, they can go there, have a lot of fun. <clears throat> you can dance a lot of good music that you guys play, uh, swing music a little bit, a little bit of everything, so that's good. What's your preference in music that you love to play? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I have so many favorite styles of music, it's hard to pick just one, but uh, I've always loved Brazilian music. Brazilian music. Something that makes you feel good about it, you know, like it has some kind of rhythm, something, maybe because they use a lot of different instruments, different sounds, and uh, being a drum player, you know, I don't know if you also play all the things, you know, that makes the whole sound sound different. You know, I, I noticed that uh, in music, you have so many different countries where they use different types of instruments, instruments that we don't even have here in the U.S. I mean, we do have them, but not everybody plays it in a regular band. But um, when you go, uh, like in India and all that, you know, they have all kinds of different uh, instruments. But you, playing the drums, you have to keep up with the beat. You have to keep up with the sound. The doom, doom. And if you notice that it's so powerful that when you listen to any song, you know, pop music, they have that boom, 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 you know, and it keeps it going, it keeps it going. And I think that it's, uh, it's very, very important for a lot of the music nowadays. What would have happened if we would not have a drum? How do the music will sound? It would sound empty. I think, to me, I've, and I've talked about this with many people, the drums, the, the, the drummer is basically the heartbeat of the band. Is the drum the soul of the band? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah? And that's actually, believe it or not, that's the first thing that, if you think about it, when a baby is still, you know, in, in the mother's womb, the heartbeat is the first uh, rhythm that they're exposed to. So that, that connection with the drums, you know, I think people naturally gravitate towards the drums. Without the drummer, it's like it sounds okay, but But it needs it that helps. beat yeah. that gets, keep going. Because sometimes I believe that the drum keeps in line everybody else playing. Because they follow the, the, the beat, boom, boom, and they know where they're going to be playing. Sometimes without that beat, they, they can't do it. I mean... It, yeah. uh, they will do it, but it's just going to be a little bit difficult to, to kind of follow because then they have to really concentrate on the sound. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's what it is. You know, I'm really thankful that you're here with us today and talking about playing the drums and doing all this because uh, it's one of those instruments that uh, not too many people talk about. That's Everybody true. talks about the guitar, the bass, you name it. But drums, not all the time, and because everybody thinks that it's too much noise. <laughs> That's true. But it's actually, it is not too much noise. What happens is that the sound by themselves, you know, it might be like doom, doom, too much going on, but it's actually, like you said, you know, it's the soul of the band who is going to make it all come together in the end. And I think that is wonderful. That mm -hmm. is great. That is good. So anything else that you would like to tell us about? you and, and what you play and what you do? 
Well, I think a lot of it is, the, the thing that's always kept me going is um, my respect for all these musicians, a lot of the veteran musicians and uh, people who have helped me along the way and just um, all, all their stories. I always love hearing their stories, but uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to make it a point. I haven't always been good about this in the past, but people that were always helping me, encouraging me along the way, I make sure to go visit them and uh, spend time with them. I just uh, went to see an elder gentleman. He was actually the co-owner of a jazz club in Toledo. His name is Clifford Murphy. And him and his wife had owned Murphy's Place in downtown Toledo. He's in his 80s now, okay. and he's not playing as much. He's a tall gentleman playing the bass, but um, he's faced with some really serious health issues now. But I got to see him not too long not ago. Long. I think it's, that's extraordinary that you can be with those people, and you can still, you know, through the years, even though when we all get old, you know, uh, it, it, it would be nice that people can still recognize the kind of work and, and, and things that they've done to the public, to the people, you know, because with the music that they play, there were times and moments where they were it. And, and now when, when they get older and they not performing as much, you know, it's kind of like people forgotten the, the time, you know, and all that. And, um, and I think it's good because they can give you good advice. They can tell you good things about what happened. And I know that music changes because we don't stay in the same thing. But the funny thing is everything comes back again to 10, 15 years later, you know, to what we started again. So it's kind of like always recycling a little bit, you know, with music, with sounds and everything. Because so far everything has been done and made. People think, oh, I got a brand new song, but it has the same beat from 20, 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. We might have a little noise, a little sound, a little scream or something that makes the sound different. But a lot of people sometimes like to make a remix of music or songs. And people, the new generations, they think, oh, that's a brand new song. Well, not really. That song that was done when performing in the 70s or 60s, it's just it's a new version of that song. And I'm sure that a lot of people like to you know, play different types of music. But playing the drums, Something that is very interesting that I feel that even though you can be even classical, they have drums. You know, they play and everything, and, and they, they do. I remember very well years ago, you know, that they have uh, Rife Conniff, and they used to play, and they have the drum set, and they have the singers, and they have everything. And it's so interesting to see the drums pretty much fit in any type of band. Yeah, I've played in, uh, in uh, symphony orchestras before too, where you've had to play multiple percussion instruments and run from this to that and play that, and I, I love doing that. Yeah, I think that, that gives you uh, an opportunity to do all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you keep playing here, you can play in there, and, and, and that maintains you really busy and good. I think it's a good way of describing a drummer. A drummer is the type of person, personally, that's what I think, a drummer is the type of person who kind of like uh, makes a decision when every sound is going to come out of, out of the whole band. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it could be a little tick, 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 like a can, you know, it could be a little bit bass because it, you have a bass too. Talking about that, can you just tell me quick, you know, I guess briefly about the sounds of each thing that you play right now in your, in your uh, drum set? Sure. Um, the, the main thing, I guess the heart of the drum set is the bass drum, you know, that you control mm -hmm. with your foot. Um, there's the snare drum that, you know, people usually see that in a marching band, but that's sitting in front of you. It's higher pitched and it has a switch where you can get more of like a tom-tom sound. And um, oftentimes you'll see other tom-toms in front, maybe some people have extra ones, and then uh, a floor tom-tom. And then the different types of cymbals, I usually use two, plus the hi-hats. The hi-hats you control with your other foot, you okay. know, the ones that together like that. And um, I have two different ride cymbals, but there's so many different variations, different oh, I'm sounds. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure that you have a many, many, many different types. But the good thing is, and the, the great thing is that you can play them all. 
I mean, it's not like you you limited yourself. Oh, I can only play this and this. And I don't know about the rest. You can do that, and and that to me is dedication. You know, and and and, and hard work of doing something like that. I, I gotta tell you, you know, uh, never heard of anything, you know, on, on, on drums like today, and, and it's fascinating. It's really fascinating because uh, it makes me feel, you know, now that every time when I'm gonna listen to any song or anything, I'm gonna listen to that drum and see how the beat is, you know, and how it's going. So uh, it, it can it can bring alive everything. So that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, before we go, I just wanted to know how can we get in touch with you. Well, you can find me on uh, Facebook at, uh, just search my name, Karen Tamales. Okay. Or you can email me at uh, Karen Tamales at hotmail.com. Okay, well, that sounds pretty good. That's easy. I know if there's anyone up there who would like to, you know, even hire you, I guess, or something, you know, if you want to proceed performing, or you might have a band that you can perform in somebody's place, I don't know, you can always contact her and he, she'll be able to tell you. Um, uh, the music that she plays, because you play everything. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say that you just play jazz. Y you also play a little bit of everything. I heard you before playing some Motown mm -hmm. music. Uh, you play a lot of ballads, a lot of different good things that I heard you before. Big band, definitely you do, uh, and more, and mm -hmm. more, right? There is any type of music that you don't, would not like to play, or that you would not want to play ever? Actually, I, I try not to limit myself. I've even done a little bit of yeah. country before, but um, it's, to me, it's all related, and yes. it's, it's just fun to do. It's a, it's a good challenge. Oh, good, good. Well, I'm glad that you, you like all kinds of music, and you are there for a lot of people. But anyway, Karen, I want to thank you very much for being here with us today. It's, it's been a fantastic uh, opportunity for me to hear you talk about what it's like to be a drummer and especially a professional drummer like you are. And, uh, and for everyone up there, I wanna thank you very much for watching The Social Connection. Once again, I am your host, Luis Mendieta, and I can't wait to see you till next time. <laughs>